Ravi de vous retrouver. Hello viewers, good to see you and thank you for staying with Football Planet, your show dedicated to football news on African news. Coming up. Massive corruption scandal hits Ghana football. Shocking revelations lead to resignation of president of the Football Association while the government dissolves its governing body. We speak to journalist Gary Al Smith on matters arising. Zimbabwe retains the 2018 Kosafa Cup title by thrashing Zambia's Chipolopolo 4 2 at the finals on Saturday. On a few days to the start of the World Cup, we end our presentation of teams representing Africa in Russia. Today, our spotlight is on Tunisia. Details shortly. Hello again and welcome to Football Planet. Let's begin with an unprecedented scandal that is currently shaking Ghanaian football. An explosive documentary by Anasa Remyo Anas was shown to the public exposing corrupt practices at the top of the federation. This rot led to resignation of president of the football body. We speak to journalist Gary Al Smith, but first a brief report. The much-talked-about documentary into corruption in Ghana football has been screened publicly for thousands of Ghanaians. A two-hour documentary titled When Greed and Corruption Become the Norm showed some referees and top football officials, including president of the Ghana Football Association, Kwesi Nyantechi, receiving bribes. Well, in Africa here, especially in Ghana here, corruption is too much. You see, our big men, they travel outside the country. You see how nice of it, some things are. But when they come to Ghana here, yeah, the government is a little bit very slow. Because when they get the money, they only dump the money into their pockets. They love their team. Hours after the documentary was screened, Kwasi Nyantechi resigned as head of the Ghana Football Association. So we need a lot of people like this man. If you see that this is what you are doing, if you bring out the evidence, me as a simple man like him, I will be happy. So we need a lot of us in our system now. World Football Governing Body, FIFA, has banned Nyantechi from all football-related activities for 90 days pending investigation. And joining us now is journalist Gary Al Smith. Thanks for your time on the program, Gary. First of all, were you surprised at all at this expose? I would not say I was surprised at the extent of the rot. However, I mean, I think that seeing it in live color on television it's shocking, you know, because in this job as journalist, you always know that these things happen. You hear a lot of things, but you are never able to prove it. And so you know that it's happening. But to actually see it in front of you is still shocking, I believe. The government announced it has dissolved the federation. Shouldn't the country be concerned about sanctions by FIFA for interfering in local football affairs? The dissolution of the FA by the government is a very, very tricky business because the reason why the government wants to do this is because of corruption. And it's not any corruption. It is because they have the evidence. And normally, if FIFA are able to get evidence that is incontrovertible, evidence that cannot be denied, sometimes they are able to make exceptions and so you will not be banned. So that's the thing. If the government are able to tell FIFA that because of this evidence that we have, it's incontrovertible. Don't ban us. Come and work with us so that we reform the system. Do you think that this expose will bring forth any change at all, especially when this has to do with something systemic? No investigation in this world can have a 100% effort of success. So what an artist investigation will do is to bring confidence back into the system. And for now, I think that is all Ghanaian football needs. People have no confidence in the system, so if things are changed and there is reform, at least people will trust the system and not a good place to start. Merci beaucoup. Thank you, Gary Al Smith. You're welcome. Bye bye. Gary Al Smith is a Ghanaian journalist based in Accra. Following this, we ask if there's a need for concern about the next Africa Women Cup of Nations in Ghana. We'll know more about this in the coming weeks, but for now, let's focus on all the teams that have qualified for this tournament.
Kindly note that this year's Africa Women's Cup of Nations is slated for November the 17th to December the 1st. It was simply a remake of last year's final at Zimbabwe on Saturday, won the Kusafa Cup beating rival Zambia. It was a stunning 4 2 win after extra time and a sixth title for the Warriors. Chancellor Ngui Limbi and Amelia Nachitimbo report. These warriors are indestructible. They came out of the ashes to claim their sixth title in the Kosafa Cup, their second in a row. The Chipolo Polo, however, had long expected to win. Even before Kadewere, who had already netted an opening goal, scored the equalizer in the final seconds of extra time. Kambole equalized for Zambia before doubling the lead in the second half. It was an epic final, as his side went all the way into extra time. And it was a double brace by Kamabiliat that sealed Zimbabwe's fate, giving his side a sweet 4-2 victory over their arch rivals. No return for the Chipolopolos, but a sixth title for the Warriors who have become the most successful team in Southern Africa. Now, let's talk the World Cup. We're a few days away from kickoff, and today we end our presentation of teams representing Africa in Russia. Our last team is Tunisia, in search of a first qualification in the round of 16. Tunisia's first World Cup appearance since 2006 may have been derailed before it started. In April, Starman and top scorer in the qualifiers, Youssef Mskani, was ruled out of the tournament after tearing a crucial ligament, a scenario that national team boss Nabil Malul had earlier equated to Argentina trying to compete in Russia without Lionel Messi. Handed one of the more favorable groups in the African qualifying section, Tunisia took 10 points from a possible 12 from their matches against Libya and Guinea while battling Democratic Republic of Congo for top spot. The Eagles of Carthage are an extremely long shot to advance from a difficult Group G, which also features Belgium and England, but the current generation of mid-twenties players in their prime are not to be underestimated. Should they defy the odds and make it to the second round, Tunisia would play the first or second place team from Group H, which features Poland, Colombia, Senegal and Japan. And there's no lack of talent for the Tunisian national team. The Eagles of Qatar may well rely on star striker Wabi Kazu, who will have a huge task of replacing his colleague Youssef Nsagni. Wabi Kazri will be under pressure to step into the role vacated by injured playmaker Youssef Nsagni. Kazri knows about the England players he will face on June 18th having had a spell at Sunderland. He is Tunisia's most influential player and has been training hard as he tries to prove his fitness before their opening Group G game. He says he expects to be fit for the crunch game, although he may not be 100%, as he has been struggling with a thigh injury that he picked up a couple of months ago. The 27-year-old has scored 12 goals in 36 appearances for Tunisia and has a powerful all-round game that enables him to take on defenders with skill, brute, strength, or more usually both. He enters the tournament on the back of a good season on loan in Rennes that saw him score nine goals in 24 Liga appearances. The attacking midfielder was a key factor in Tunisia's return to the world stage. And in addition to this World Cup, you can follow our daily show from Monday to Friday. You can also find more information at africanews.com. Let's end this program with a report on the setbacks facing Gabonese football. Players are not amused at all. Find out why in this report by Nassis Ndubi and Michael Odo. Gabonese footballers are struggling to make ends meet. Deprived of salary since the beginning of this year's league, most players are no longer able to support themselves. According to a study conducted by Global Union for Professional Footballers, 96 of Gabonese players 
suck up to this. Believe on that only. They no longer go to school. They no longer do other jobs. They are only footballers. So you can see that in this chaotic situation of Gabonese football, the fat victims are the football players who sometimes found themselves without shelter, sometimes without food, and even found themselves as beggars. I think that today we cannot even talk more about the diseases. The Gabonese football is dead. We must clearly change the system. If not, its function will simply diminish. This has also affected the federation management, who are crying fault to the government for underpaying them salaries and even underfunding the whole association. The truth is that the government is giving out cash to support football, but the issue is that this cash is not being directed to the right channel. It's not the responsibility of the state to pay players personally, but this is the work of the association and the clubs. But at the same time, the state has been underfunding the sport by giving little cash. Therefore, this forces clubs to do other projects, which some don't do today. Gabon launched his professional championship in 2012. The current average salary of a player in Division 1 is approximately 380 euros, far from the 609 euros as directed by the country's laws. And that's how we end this program, which you can find on our website at africanews.com. Your reactions are also welcome for the addresses currently displayed on your screen. Football Planet returns same time next week. Goodbye.